Hi, I'm Terry Leverett, president of Prepare the Way. I'd like to introduce to you David Grenier of Armageddon Armory. He uh, is an expert in arms, as he's going to teach on that, but uh, and he comes to it with a 30-year history of the Special Forces, and now with a, his Armory gun store. Thank you. I'm David Renier, and I want to talk to you about pricing on firearms, ammunition, and some reasons why that if you'll take my advice, you need to buy what you want to buy in the next 90 days. There's a, a lot of good reasons for that. And I'm just going to start and go through some of the background reasons for that and then move into the pricing. On firearms, we know that incrementally, the Antichrist movement, the political left, has tried to incrementally chip away at the rights, a little here, a little there. They actually have gotten a whole lot smarter than they were back in the 90s during the Clinton so-called assault weapon ban. They did not ban a single assault weapon. An assault weapon has selective fire. Nothing that's available to you has selective fire. They were just trying to demonize a class of semi-automatic weapons with an extreme sounding name in order to emotionally manipulate people, which is witchcraft. So here's the deal. 90 days from now, we are facing a possible social political constriction. As people watch the upcoming presidential election, People are not well informed that Barack Obama is the single most anti-gun politician of all time, when he, including when he was in the Senate in Illinois and in the Senate in the United States Senate and as president. He is the single most anti-gun politician in America. He is, sits on the board of the Jane Group and on some other groups, and he... He, we have statements from him when he was a senator saying some pretty radical things, and he doesn't want those statements to come out, and I'm hoping we're going to get them out, but here's the thing. Right now, as the, as the election draws nearer, there has been a bunch of people who have seen that the possibility of the election going to the Democrats again is as a possibility, and what happened is, is that starting in January of this year, firearm sales went up at a, at a greater angle than they had been going up. Firearm sales have increased every year for, for over a decade. Every month sets a record. The amount of firearms being sold is phenomenal. The factories cannot crank them out fast enough. As we grow closer to the election, the demand is going to grow exponentially greater. Already, a lot of the firearms that I've displayed here are unavailable. That means you go down to your store and they'll say, yeah, we wish we had one, we could sell you. Ruger quit taking new orders for several months recently because they were overwhelmed with orders. You know, and so what I'm gonna say is, there could be a constriction because of supply and demand, and if the election goes the wrong way, there will be a restriction. There is a treaty that you probably heard about, the UN Small Arms Treaty. It, will, it did not pass simply because Saudi Arabia, believe it or not, stood up for the right of its citizens to be armed because all the Bedouins and everybody out in the countryside are armed to the teeth and they wouldn't go along with Saudi Arabia, which is ran by the Saud family, to sign on to that UN treaty. Hillary Clinton has promised the world that we will sign on to it. Well, I can show you the videos on it, her saying that specifically. What that treaty will do is that treaty will require first the registration of all firearms, past, coming out in the future. The second thing it does is it leads to the banning of semi-automatic firearms, basically all but just a few small 22 calibers. Then what's the, what the, real, the realistic 
experience is that there's actually 37 nations that have already signed on to this. Guess who thought this up? We did. The United States of America are the people who, who proposed and wrote most of the SIFTA treaty stuff and we're the last people hauled out to sign on to it. And then every place we've seen registration, total registration within three years, we've seen bans, which is confiscation. Okay, so they actually, I said they're a lot smarter than they were in the 90s. Check this out. They economically back, are backdooring the firearms industry under attack. What they've done is they've turned the uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives loose. And since 1999, they have reduced the number of FFLs, that's federally licensed firearm licenses the dealers have, they have reduced them by over 75% and they're proud of it. And they are continuing to reduce those federally licensed firearm dealers substantially with little tiny paperwork things that if, if you get the right judge, the judge will say, never bring a case before me like this again. But most of the judges who are on the liberal side will go, oh yeah, that's, we're gonna revoke your license. So they have an economic backdoor that's governmental Plus, they did something extremely smart, and Hillary Clinton was a big part of this back around 2002. In 2002, there were eight, eight insurance underwriters who would write insurance policies for gun dealers. That was in January of 2002. In May of 2002, there were two left. So they went behind the scenes, and they got six of the major underwriters to drop to two. So now there's two choices. You go with AIG or you go with Lloyd's of London. Both of them crooks. Okay? So we are one of, there are two fully licensed firearm shops in the state of Idaho and my wife owns one of them. <laughs> In the last five years, the United States government has bought more small arms ammunition than it was used in the entirety of World War II. They have, I'm telling you straight up, billions upon billions of rounds of small arms ammunition in pistol and center fire ammunition. They have bought it and they have put it on order. And right now they are putting it on order and they are driving the prices up on ammunition and they are requiring through a couple of security acts that certain companies sell to them because there's a national interest. Well, believe me, if your farms are an ammunition manufacturer and the government says, hey, we're gonna give you a billion dollar contract rather than going out on the open market and trying to sell your ammo, it's attractive to sell your ammunition to the government. They're a sure pay deal. They have bought more automatic cannon shells in the last two years than were used in the entirety of World War II. They are sucking up the demand. They are taking up all excess capacity. Then, this is an exceedingly devious move. I'm telling you, they are really getting smart. They are going out to foreign governments who we do support through military foreign aid programs and they are saying, if you will buy ammunition from American sources, we will increase your military aid in that area to put further supply strain and price demand, pardon, the supply and demand strain onto the ammunition sources. So what we're doing is we're going out and giving foreign governments hundreds of millions of dollars if they will use that new money on top of their regular foreign aid to buy American produced ammunition. We have this documented nine ways to Sunday, everything that's here. In effect, this is the most shocking thing. I didn't have time to write this down yet. But this is all pretty serious stuff. So if you wish to purchase arms and ammunition, you need to do it soon. 
There is such a worldwide demand for ammunition right now that for the last two and a half years, the United States forces in Iraq have been being issued wolf ammunition purchased in Russia. Buy metal, not brass, cartridge ammunition. That's how much the shortage is. In the last two and a half years, the, the United States coalition forces in Iraq have been being issued Wolf brand bimetal cartridge ammunition, even in hollow points, which is against the Geneva Convention. They are creating an incredible drain on the ability of the U.S. arms manufacturers to produce arms and to produce ammunition. This is the most insidious of all. <clears throat> there is a group, two groups in America right now. One's called ATK. It's a big conglomerate. And there's another group called Cerebus Investments. ATK is a conglomerate of some um, foreign and domestic investors. They have bought around 75% of the domestic capability of ammunition manufacture. They are really sweeping in and consolidating on the ammunition side and some firearms and a lot of accessory sites. Cerebus Investments. Cerebus is the three-headed dog out of mythology that guards the gates of hell. It's an antichrist group. Cerebus Investments is ran by a guy named Steve. I forget his last name out of New York City. Cerebus Investments owns a company called Freedom Group. Nice sounding, huh? Freedom Group receives cash from Service Investments. Freedom Group owns Marlin, Remington, Bushmaster, Olympic Arms, DPMS, and on and on and on. They own more than half of the U.S. domestic arms production capability. This is where the military has to go, is to these companies. Guess who owns Cerebus Investments? A guy named George Soros. Antichrist, anti-gun, everything. So you can see what's happening to the firearms industry. It's being attacked behind the scenes, in the face, in the TV, the liberal coverage of everything is negative. Economically, government, on any way you can attack the industry, it is being attacked. So I've, I'm just trying to get you to understand why you need to be purchasing now. And what I want to talk about is that if you have if you have a photo identification that's government issued and it has your correct address on it, you and you have a clean background, you can buy long guns and handguns in the states that you live in. You can generally buy long guns outside your state, but you can only buy handguns in the state that you're a resident of. There is a way where you can buy handguns out of state, but they have to be shipped to a local dealer to be transferred to you so that, you, that, the, that the, all the applicable laws and background checks can be done. The trade is so gutted right now. I've sold right near $20 million worth of firearms in the last eight years. I've bought about $22 million worth. The prices are up, the supply is down, and everybody knows there isn't much more room on the train for economic, for the civilian supply. The bottom line here is you need to go and exercise your Second Amendment right, get your identification in order, 
go down there, you'll fill out a 4473, it's a form, it's an ATF form, and it'll get your identity, and it'll ask you a series of questions. Are you the actual buyer of this firearm? Yes. Then it'll go, are you a fugitive from justice? Have you been this? Have you been that? Are you addicted to this? Or have you been adjudicated mentally defective? And then what it does is it is a background check that you sign, they call it in, it goes to a place called the NCIS Center. NICS, we call it. They run through three government computer databases and they determine that yes, you are eligible to purchase a firearm or a handgun. If you're 18 years old, you can generally buy a long gun. You have to be 21 years old or older to buy a handgun. Did I say that right? Long gun 18 plus, 21 for a handgun. The bottom line here is, this is not registering your firearm. And that's why you've got to buy it now. All this is doing is ascertaining whether you are eligible to purchase these firearms. Within 48 hours, the computer, which is a standalone computer that generated the transaction code for this, has to have the core burnt. It's a law. They have to delete all the information in 48 hours. We have representatives from the National Shooting Sports Federation stand there and watch it happen. We monitor it all the time. But if you filled the form out and you indicated good things and they said no, and you are denied the right to purchase a firearm, they keep a record of it and then they come and arrest you and prosecute you for illegally trying to buy a firearm. So if you have a clean record and you want to look, and you can just go in and say, hey, let me look at a 4473. Look at the questions. Ask questions. If you feel that you can legally purchase, do it. But if you feel you can't, don't. Because when you sign that, it becomes a felony if you knowingly try to buy a firearm when you know that you're not legally eligible to do so. And they use that form as evidence against you. Self-incrimination. <laughs> so if you can exercise your ability to do so, go and do it. Buy these arms and ammunition, and we talked about the different types of firearms. And here's something I would really ask you. I've done this for years. I've been involved in this for a long, long time. Go to a reputable firearm shop. Avoid pawn shops. Avoid pawn shops at all things. Even though the guy says it's a good deal and it's a good looking gun, do not buy it. Everyone who knows guns and they can't sell it to their buddy, and it's a broken gun, and it isn't worth fixing, they take it to a pawn shop and dump it. Because the pawn shop's only gonna give them 25 cents on the dollar of its worth anyway, and so they're willing to get rid of their junk guns at pawn shops. And then a pawn shop is gonna try and sell you that firearm at new retail prices, and it's a used, broken piece of junk. The pawn shop guys, 99% of them do not know firearms. Avoid that. I, in the past, I would have say avoid box stores. Independent firearm shops sell 88% of the firearms in the U.S. Box stores, even though they have those big displays like Cabela's and, and, uh, where, and uh, Swartzen's Warehouse and Walmart and stuff, they, they account for 22% or, percent or less of the firearm sales because they, they don't know firearms. <clears throat> the people that are in those places are clerks. They do not accept trade-ins. You go to a reputable firearm shop, you're gonna be able to trade, buy, sell, consign, and you're gonna get good service. Because the guy is a smaller guy and he has to give good service or he isn't gonna exist. They're gonna know guns, they're gonna be able to special order you guns where the guys at the big places aren't gonna take the time to work with you. The littler places are gonna have classes to teach you and train you. And the reputable farm shop is not gonna rip you off. 
These guys will, and the box stores are notorious for advertising shotguns and small caliber rifles. Great big numbers, and you go in there and they go, oh, I just sold the last one 10 minutes ago. Well, you ask them, well, you put a, a half a page ad out on this, how many did you have when the sale started? Oh, we had two. <laughs> you know, it's a price, a price loss deal where they have very small inventory that they're willing to dump and they're just getting you in there and say, well, look, this is just 40 bucks more, and it does the same thing, and it's got more bells and whistles, so you're here, why don't you grab it? Well, that's one of the only reasons I would even suggest that you even go to a big box store now is because if they got it, buy it. It's that desperate. Trouble is, if it doesn't work, you can't take it back to them. Same thing with the pawn shops, thank you. Most, most, some will take guns back. But you cannot walk into Walmart with a broken gun. Try it. <laughs> Even though you bought it from them. It isn't their problem. You have to go deal with the factory and it's not that easy to do. So now we're going to talk about pricing. Pricing has went up a lot. I had some basic firearms here that we talked about earlier. And I have examples of them here if you want to look at them again. I'm talking new prices right now. There'll be one or two used prices down here. A 12 gauge or a 20 gauge pump shotgun for home defense, you're going to pay between $300 and $29 to $450. There's such a thing as MSRP. Most of the independent gun shops sell below MSRP. The box stores do sell below MSRP also, but a lot of the box stores' regular price is MSRP, and then they make big ads out, and they drop 20 bucks, which is about down where, 20 to 40 bucks is down to where the regular gun shops are. We laugh at Cabela's and Sportsman's Warehouse because their sale price is still 10 bucks above our regular price. So a bedside revolver in 357 Magnum and 38 Special, you're going to pay between $399 to $700. Because of the difference in frame materials and the difference in manufacturers and the difference in weight, some of them, you get up here, you've got some real nice guns that have the laser built into it from the factory. 22 long rifle, the prices are skyrocketing. You're going to pay now for a cheap, lower quality 22 rifle, probably around $180, and to get a nice one, you're gonna pay up to about 295, and a really nice 22 rifle is $400 now. The price that a hunting rifle was a year or two ago. This is what I say is the minimum you need to invest in hardware. So you can add that up, whoever you want to add that up. Four, five, six, seven, eight hundred bucks minimum. This is for your basic home package. Your shot shells, like I said earlier, you can get shot shells for practice for around five to six ninety nine a box for twenty five rounds. You're going to pay a dollar a round for good home defense stuff. The 357 Magnum, you're going to pay practice ammunition, you're going to pay for FMJs. You're going to pay 24 bucks to $30 a box for hollow points. You're going to pay 29 to $50 a box. And a lot of these, they're going to sell you 20 rounds for 25 to $29. This isn't like, when you get up in these specialty self-defense rounds, these prices jump way up. The 22 long rifle for plinkers, I would suggest that every time you go to Walmart or someplace that you buy a brick of 500, and you do it every time you go, just like you're buying milk. 500 plinkers are going to run you about an average of $19.99. Quality 
copper-coated hollow points that are much cleaner and much more useful for hunting and stuff that'll stop deer and stuff. We'll say a hollow point, you're gonna get a brick for about 29 bucks. Every time you go to the store, you buy this. One, just get one at least. If you have if you have a handgun, you should be getting a box every week of ammunition. If you can afford to get more, get more. Shot shells, you should jump all over those. These come in cases of 250, so they're not that expensive to buy a case of them. We come down to the 22 long rifle. I, re I, I suggest this as a minimum. I suggest these firearms that you try earnestly to add to your collection. A 22 long rifle revolver, and it could be a combo. There's a place called Heritage Arms. And when you buy this 22 long rifle single action revolver with a six inch barrel, it comes with a 22 Magnum cylinder. It's only a couple hundred bucks. So you're gonna pay between 200 and $600 depending on who makes it, but the Heritage $200 one and the Rossi $300 or $400 one, you know, they're just fine. The 308 bolt rifle, for the bear rifle, you're gonna pay somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 to 600, depending on brand, and you can pay, like for that sniper rifle I showed you earlier that we sell to, sell to the SWAT teams, I give them a heck of a deal even at $1,200 for that rifle with no optic. It is a precision tool. And I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a cheap firearm. It is a product that if you pay cheap, you are endangering yourself. Think about it. Even in a small center fire cartridge such as 223, the second that primer goes off, you are developing 52,000 pounds per square inch inside that chamber. You don't want something, you don't want that kind of energy right by your face and something cheap. You want something forged, not cast. You want something proven, not some cheap import. You want a good firearm because a cheap firearm is as much a danger to you as it is to anything else. An optic. Optics, you can buy optics is a good value right now. There's some great buys out there because of CNC grinding of lenses. It's not old guys getting 60 bucks an hour with a felt pit grinding and putting a cross on there and grinding and, <coughs> and getting all of these distortions out. It's now done and popped out by the thousands. You can buy a fabulous optic for 150 bucks and you can spend clear up to $4,000 and your eye won't be able to tell any difference. Excuse me a moment, I need to get my water. <coughs> Thanks. A 223 bolt rifle, a bolt action, one where you provide the mechanical energy to and put a new shell in and eject the spirit round. You should try and get one. Again, on this, you're gonna be around 400 to 600. And then you could have an optic on this also. The reason I'm suggesting these particular rounds is because the military and police and National Guard are going to run these same rounds. So they'll have ammunition that you may be able to get a hold of by people that are leaving the military that won't follow the illegal orders that they're soon going to be given. Also, a, 20, a 223 semi-automatic rifle, two choices. A Mini 14, such as we showed you here in a carbine. I, you can find these used from 400, and they're new, they're 800. This is a tough gun. It's lightweight. It's, it'll do the job. Low maintenance. AR-15, higher maintenance, but a lot of people were trained on this in the military. Do not, below, do not buy an AR-15 below $900. It will be cast. It'll be sub-military standard. It'll look nice, and it'll, it, it is a piece of junk. If it costs $900 or more, you still need to ask them, is this puppy forged? Is everything on it military spec or in excess? Because some companies are devious and not ethical, and they will try and pass off junk that's cast and not heat treated and 
poor parts for above 900 bucks. You can pay upwards of $1,400 on one of these, depending on the accessories and stuff, but do not go below $900. So you need to add that up and see your range of what you can get into. We're gonna talk ammunition here. This 22 is adequate for this. So this price is the same here. The 308, the ammunition is getting incredibly difficult to find. Whether it be just plinkers or whatever, you may have to buy hunting ammunition and that hunting ammunition will have a soft tip on it, but it's still gonna be quite effective, especially if you're gonna do some hunting too. You're gonna be 24 to $40 for a box of 20 depending on quality and name brand. I do happen to have some military surplus and it's still 75 cents around. Way more than it was. 10 years ago, it was 18 cents around. The optics, you don't spend the big money on the optics unless you really know something about glass and you really can afford it. The 223 bolt rifle, this ammunition I have it, it's virtually unavailable anywhere, and this is talking about, this is brass case, brass cartridges, high quality. You're going to pay around $9 a box of 20 right now, and the price is going up, and, and it isn't even available. I sell cases of it for 419 bucks for 1,000, which is well below nine bucks a box. But I saw what this coming. I saw this coming. And I got a. I got a whole bunch of it. I bought a lot of it. I bought a lot. That's. I, I cleaned out several distributors. Same thing down here on these semi-automatics. You can put an optic on this. Just don't go crazy with the money. AR-15. You may put an optic on this too. So this. These are all rifles. That are capable of supporting magnified. Scopes is what most people call them. Don't be afraid to get into holograms or red dots. Real nice. But they do have, they do have batteries in them. So here's something that you should consider. Don't sell any guns you have unless you have, thank you, unless you have firearms that you never use and you never will use. If they are outside of these categories, you may regret trading them off, but if you have to trade them off so that you could fill in these slots, do it, do it now. Those firearms that you're not using now may be valuable trading material in the future, worth far more than you have into them. But the trouble is, is when you trade them off, do not give them ammunition in the trade. You don't want it used back on you immediately, okay? Don't ever do guns and ammo trades with anybody. Keep them totally separate. Does that make sense? Trade it if you have to, to get what you need. Your best bet is to buy and to buy quality and to buy new. You can buy from neighbors and stuff, but don't sell to neighbors. Not only because you don't want them armed, you may want them armed, but the bottom line is, is that it's always your neighbor who you don't know something about in their background and they're not eligible to buy a firearm, you sell it to them, then you are an accessory to any crime they commit. And it's the guy you like and trust the most and he's watched your kids and he turns out to be a felon when he was 19 or something, you know. So don't sell, don't sell to neighbors. Buy from neighbors, okay? You can trade firearms sometimes to get what you want. And don't expect to get new prices from them you know, expect that you're gonna lose some value from what you paid for them. It's like cars. Firearms are just exactly like cars. They have a blue book, and they have a bunch of more books besides this that have, this one doesn't have many pictures of the firearm. This book assumes that you know quite a bit about firearms, and it's thousands of pages, 
and it is nowhere near complete. The books that have lots of pictures in them are for people that don't know much about firearms. <laughs> so you can help identify what you got, and their information is very minimal. This is very explicit. It tells you manufacture dates, all kinds of extras and accessories. It has prices according to a 100% sliding scale. 100% is new in the box, unfired with all the paperwork. Just like it came off the shelf, you took it home, you didn't fire it, you put it underneath the bed. It'll tell you what that price is. Then it'll tell you what 98% what is. That's a gun that looks really nice, but it's been shot. It may have a scratch on it, maybe two scratches. At 98%, it's got to be perfect. And then it shows you how much value it loses down the line. Even, even a gun at 80% condition will generally run you half of what 100% was. It's vicious. And it's true. And dealers are not going to give you this price. This is a retail price. We take this price, and then I take 35% off of it. That's what I'll offer them in cash or trade value because I have to take that gun in. I have to do $25 to $30 worth of paperwork on that gun to put it in my books, to keep it, to inventory it, to take it back out and run the background check on the next purchaser. I have to only pay 20 to 50 bucks for a gunsmith to go through it and make sure that it works right. I'm 50 bucks out right there on a gun that only had $150 in it. So I'm only making 75. Well, I'd rather make 75 on a used gun than 25 to 30 on a new gun. If you try to dicker with new gun people, they're going to laugh at you. Because there isn't much markup in new guns, and they just want you to don't look, they just don't want you to look like a fool go there and going, oh, I'll give you 150 less cash. Well, that's $100 below the guy's cost. <laughs> but on a used gun, you might be able to dicker with them a little bit, especially if you're trading. Okay, I just want you to know how the mechanics of this work. These books are available. They're $49.99. It's cheap for a book like this with this kind of information. And what they do up in the front is they tell you how to grade firearms. They actually go through and give you lots of pictures right in the front in, a, in an education section here. And they'll show you why two guns side by side, same model, same year manufacturer, why one's worth $4,000 and one's worth $400. And it's in living color, and, it's, and you read it, and you start seeing the mentality that they're using, and then you start learning. You don't have a whole lot of time to learn, but I don't want you to get ripped off. You can actually access this online. They're going to make you pay, of course, with a credit card to get into this. If you're worried about getting ripped off, Ask to see the book. A reputable firearm guy is going to have this book, and he's going to use this book. It isn't going to hurt him if he's using a formula for you to read that formula. Explain to me how you arrived at my trade-in value. Explain to me how you arrived at your value. Just ask. they got good reasons why they're selling stuff. The guys in the independent shops know guns. These are generally politically activated people that have sacrificed, have been in the service, know a whole heck of a lot more about what's going on in this realm than the general public does, because it's a hard business. It's a very hard business. You've got to be on top of it all the time. Little tiny details will take you out. So if you want to look at that or get into that, I'd suggest you do that. Some of the things that you can expect in pricing is I wanted to go through some ammo pricing with you. You're going just so that you can know on your handguns, such as if you have handguns and you want to practice a lot, I suggest 9mm. You're going to pay everywhere from $12.99 a box of 50 to 25 bucks for 50. And you could just extrapolate that up into the thousands. You should have thousands of rounds. You should have these ammo cans like we showed you earlier. You want to give me an ammo can, Santee? You should put them in a waterproof, humidity-proof container. Keep them cool. 38 Special. 
great round. There's a whole bunch of loads right off the shelf. You're going to pay between $18 and $35 right now for a box of 50. There is that much variance in it. 357 Magnum, you're going to pay 24 to 39. Yeah, actually, there's some higher quality up here in the hollow points. You're going to pay clear up to 50. But just for, just for regular ammunition that you want to have to shoot and to hang out with, 44 Magnum, 44 Special and 44 Magnum, both are about 30 to 50 bucks right now for a box of 50. And what I'm saying is, is this is what it is today. This is rapidly going up. You're gonna go down there, some places are gonna have a fair selection, and that's why I'm saying that some of the box stores you might get into because they might have more selection. I buy ammunition directly from the manufacturers and from the importers. I buy them right off the dock in pallets and truckloads. I get good prices. And it is very hard for me to retail at these prices, even the way I'm buying them. So you've got to figure the little guy in the independent shop that isn't able to buy pallets and truckloads, his margin is really small on ammunition. And it is coming to the point where if he's got it, you buy it. You know, especially in the hunting rounds. You want to, if you've got a 223 and you want to get into 223, you buy it. You see it, you buy it. I would avoid 17 HMR, great round, but can't reload for it. You can reload this. 243, 270. Of course, you could get 7.5 millimeter in here, 6 millimeter is equivalent diameters in here. This is 5.56. 308. And you could go right on up through the hunting loads. These higher calibers and these magnum calibers. These calibers right now cost more than 50 BMG. That great big firearm we had in here that was $12,500 in the first session. Average cost of the shell is five to seven dollars. In these magnums here, thank you. In these magnums here, you're looking for a box of 20, 338 Lapua right now. I am the cheapest guy in the state of Idaho and it is $130 a box of 20. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of these are far more. These are 165 box, a box of 20 right now. This 308, we can get you down from cheap ammunition from 75 cents a round up to about 35, to 40 bucks, yeah, 35, let's see, up to about, from 75 cents around to $40 a box, a 20. So, you can still buy in these ranges here, on these loads, 24 to 35, depending on what type of bullets they have for a box of 20. 223 is going to vary because you have to watch out for bimetal. In fact, you might as well just buy it if you can find it. I don't recommend it, but for trading stock, I would get it everywhere from $6 a box for the bimetal, which means that the cartridge, the case itself, is made out of steel and it has a zinc wash over it. It's a real cheap way to make. It's uh, generally got a plastic coating over it. It's not real good for auto loaders. But nice for bolt action. But on this 5.56 and these, some of these military rounds, I have armor piercing rounds on this that are like 10 bucks a box. 10 for 20. 
but you can get varmint loads in 223 that are especially uh, like Nosler Varmageddon heads. You can get um, Hornaday VMAXs on the special bullets, and you're going to pay as much as $30 for 20 of those. So what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to get you to where you walk in there, you, you're not going to feel like you're getting ripped off or taken advantage of. Uh, in another month to two months, if it starts looking like the, the Democrats are going to get in, you aren't even going to be able to buy it at any price. The prices are going to go right off the scale. So reloading equipment, I highly suggest it. If you're into reloading, buy powders and bullets and cartridges and put it away. It's a good way to make your own loads. It's a cheaper way to get into ammo. That stuff is actually becoming scarce now too, but it's still somewhat available. So reload, I would like you to think about that, reloading equipment and supplies. So if you're going to, if, you're, if you have a budget, if you have some extra expendable cash, there will not be a better investment you can make. This is good heavy metal investing. 4440 gun steel, brass, lead, and copper is going to appreciate higher than gold is. I have been in four different places where everything has fallen to pieces, and I could trade one center fire cartridge for an entire day's labor out of a guy. Sun up to sundown. Dig me a hole from here to there and put some logs over it and some sandbags on it. And I'd give them one cartridge and they were glad to do it. So it comes down to you, you, will, be, you will be incredibly surprised. I, I often wonder why I've had to go through that three or four times. And then I look at America and here's what I think. I think if you have a few guns and a whole lot of ammo, you're going to be OK. You have a better chance than most. Because every place I've been that fell apart, that we made fall apart, there were guns everywhere. Guns were cheap. They were laying all over the place. There was no bullets to put in them. There was no ammunition. It was the ammo that was expensive. It was, had value. It was portable, transferable wealth. Everybody shot up all the guns. And then when it was done, you threw it down because you didn't want to pack it. And I'd like to talk about defense strategies and some other things about some about the way to water and stuff. Believe me, you will, you're going to learn what the way to water is if you try to move. And there's a whole bunch of other things I can tell you. If you want to move and you want to carry wealth with you, you can carry a whole bunch of 22 shells. You can't carry a whole bunch of this other stuff. And I'm telling you, if you, if you just have to have something, you get you a bolt action. This is the absolute minimum. One thing, if you have to own one firearm, this is it. It is a bolt action. Tube fed, that means that the magazine tube is underneath the barrel in a long cylinder. Twenty-two long rifle. And I would suggest that you get it in a synthetic stock, not a wood stock, because the synthetic stock weighs less. <coughs> you can buy these used. Hundred bucks. You can buy them brand new for around two hundred right now. This is the most versatile firearm, and I wouldn't waste time trying to find a new one. I'd go buy the new one right now, and if you run into some used ones, good for you. Put them away. <coughs> that tube fed. You aren't going to lose the magazine, are you? You're not going to be fumbling around in the dark changing a clip out. I mean, it's not a clip, it's actually a magazine when it holds the bullet. And lose that magazine, and you're down to a single shot. That tube is going to hold 15 to 17 rounds, and it's going to be up underneath the barrel so that when you're laying in the dirt, it's not sticking down there holding the gun up while you're trying to duck while somebody's shooting at you. 
gives you a low profile gun that you can lay down and shoot. You can clean it with your shirt tail. You can lube it with a plant leaf. If you had to, get you a succulent plant, peel the leaf open, get the goo out of it, and lube it. If it gets sticky, put a little water on it and it'll rehydrate that juice in there. It'll make it work. That gun will work almost as good as an AK-47 for coming to be tough. It'll kill deer, it'll kill people, it'll make noise, it'll scare people off. A 22, at 20 yards, you're holding a 22, you can't tell it's a 22. I might be able to, but you probably couldn't, and no one else will probably be able to tell what it is either. People laugh at 22s. 22s are deadly. They're, they're, I, I was 15 years old before I found out you weren't supposed to shoot a deer with a 22. <laughs> that's all we had. That's what we shot. So do you have anything about pricing? And, and I'm, what I'm trying to do is get you a picture of what's going on so that you can develop What's my budget and what's my needs? What can I realistically do right now? You need to do it. You need to do it. You got a clean photo government issued ID. Even if it doesn't have your right address on it, you still need a piece of other government ID with the right address, such as a car registration. Not an insurance bill. It has to be government issued. You know, something government issued with your right ID your right address on it. So get down there, buy, buy, buy. We could talk a whole lot about why guns cost a whole lot more than other firearms. This is an exceedingly hard to get gun. And I just wanted to show it, we saw it earlier, it's a 357 Magnum made in Germany, it can shoot a 38 Special. You could reload hand loads for this. Six shot, it's steel. It is indestructible. This puppy is inexpensive. It's called a Windicator, if you can find it. W-I-N-D-I-C-A-T-O-R. I'd highly suggest for the, if you can't find a Windicator, get a Rossi. Then after that, a Taurus, for your value for what you're buying. If you have more money, go up to Smith & Wesson and, and Ruger. Smith & Wesson and Ruger make fine products, but they're extremely overpriced. It isn't easy to make firearms. They have to be precision made. I mean, everything on it has to work perfectly. The liability in producing a firearm is very high. That's why I'm saying if a really cheap gun is not worth the risk, don't go below this quality right here. You can expect to pay around $375, $399 for this gun. And that's cheap for a 357 Magnum. Don't go below that. Someone says, oh, I got something for 200 bucks right here, and they say it's new. Don't buy it. You know, heavier calibers for, the, for what you're needing is what you need to go after. This firearm right here with this laser on it, <coughs> This firearm retail is $600, $599. This little uh, laser, it'll run anywhere, but run, uh, this little laser will run clear up to $300, depending on where you buy it at. Because they make a lot of money off of accessories. You know, they structure most of their profit in it. They'll sell you a gun, they'll sell you a rifle for 25 bucks above cost. But then you buy a sling for 15 bucks that they made $10 on. Then you buy a set of bases for $10 that they made $5 on. Then you buy an optic for 200 that they made 100 on. Then you buy two set two boxes of shells that they bought another they got another 10 bucks a piece. You see all their profit is in the accessories. It's like buying those trophies, not the purchase. Yeah. That's where yeah, the, the soft drink is the profit generator. So on these sales when they try and sell you accessories, there's where they're making their money. This particular firearm comes, which dealers hate this, because this hurts dealers. This particular firearm comes with a clamshell holster. It comes with a magazine loader. It comes with a magazine caddy for two extra magazines. It comes with stainless steel mags. It comes in a Pelican hard case. 
about the only accessory you're going to get out of this sale is some ammo. And a lot of times when people buy from dealers, they'll say, well, can you throw in a box of ammo? <laughs> yeah. A good firearm, and you need to get training on it, how to use it. I just, on buying and selling, don't, if you, you should buy and not sell. That's the bottom line. The best advice you can get is that if you're going to buy in the neighborhood, you're going to buy at garage sales, you're going to buy off estate of sales, whatever. Buy, don't sell. Keep buying. This stuff, this is worth more than a bunch of bricks of gold in a safety deposit box that you can't get to. Coins that you can't plant them, you can't eat them, you can't heal your family with them. <laughs> you know, this is good heavy metal stuff for when the stuff goes down. I literally have seen, I have literally seen jewelry and cash and precious metal objects laying in the streets in foreign countries because all the crooks ran in and stole it and then they'd run out and they'd be running away with it and then they start thinking, oh, I don't need this, I'm gonna go back and get the rice. You know? So they throw it down, they went back and got the rice. You know, they got the food, they got the portable generator, they got the fuels. They spliced up because they can't eat that stuff. You know, monsoon was starting, nothing's gonna grow. You gotta think about it, you know, you gotta have your strategy. You need, this is the finest investment you're gonna make and you're going to, and it's going to be one of those head slappers where you go, oh, I wish I'd have done more. And you're going to always, no matter what you have, you're going to say, oh, what I just traded that box of shotgun shells for, and you don't even have a shotgun in that gauge. Buy, even if you don't have all of these different cartridges, stock up on it for trading stock. This is really good stuff to trade. It lasts, its value is going to skyrocket. If worse comes to worse, you can, if you, if you wanted to, you should get on the internet and download some plans of how to make your own firearms. You can make your own firearms. It's pretty simple, they're not rocket science. You just have to be careful about the materials you choose. They can't come after and find all this. They could maybe find some of this stuff. But ammunition, ammunition will be the very first high value, small dimensional trading material right off the bat. Any questions I can do real quick? We're about done. Anything? 308's a high-powered centerfire rifle. I would suggest the Savage Stevens Model 200. It's air gauge button rifle, free floated, aluminum pillar bedded, and you should be able to get into it for less than 400 bucks. It'll outshoot guns that were $4,000 a decade ago. You don't need the Accu trigger. It is, still has an adjustable trigger in that Model 200. There, there really isn't there's only uh, a few things that, you know, if we had time, I'd go through who's making stuff. Remington no longer makes firearms. It's all overseas production, has been for five years. It's gonna be made in Bacal, it's gonna be made in Yugoslavia, it's gonna be in Croatia, it's gonna be made in Greece, it's gonna be made in Singapore. It isn't, even though it says Ilian New York on it, that means they brought all the parts here and put it together. You know, it could be made anywhere, all right? You should have, you should have five to 10,000 rounds of 22. You should have at least 10, 10 cases, which is only 2,500 rounds of shotgun shells. You should have two or 3,000 rounds of your revolver ammunition. And you should just try and buy as much of this stuff as you possibly can. Minimums is in the thousands.
thousands, not one thousand, multiple thousands. All right, we're done.